and welcome back to Love Your Food. This week we have a bit more of a complex recipe for you. This is poulet grand mer. This is a white wine stewed or braised chicken and it's got quite a few steps. It's a little bit more complicated than some of the ones we've been doing recently, but is absolutely delicious, really beautiful and rich and warm, and we're gonna start with our ingredients. So we're starting with chicken. We have uh, bone-in skin on thighs. We're gonna be using some onion, some shallot, some mushrooms. We have black oyster mushrooms here, uh, some thyme and some parsley, some celery, some carrots, uh, some new potatoes, some pearl onions or cipollinis if you can find them, uh, some butter and flour, some white wine. We're using this beautiful Henry of Pelham Pinot Grigio. So you want something that's uh, light and tart and not too fruity and some chicken stock. First thing we're going to do is get our uh, chicken thighs ready. Now, poulet grand mer, this is a stewed dish. It's uh, like a braised chicken dish. And normally this would be made with uh, an older bird, uh, hence the name Poulet Grand Mare, which is grandmother chicken, and, which is an old sort of old tough bird, which is why it requires the longer cooking. Now, if you can't get that, then I mean, dark meat is perfect for this. So we're just going to season these first and we're just going to get a little salt and pepper on there. You can also use capon for this if you can get a hold of that, which is uh, useful, although that's more uh, typical for something like coquelin, which we will be doing a video, a video on eventually. And we're just going to dredge these in flour. We're not going to bread them or anything like that. We just want to give them a little coating of flour uh, to give the outside a little extra crispiness and color because that color is going to be really, really delicious. It's got a lot of flavor in it. So uh, we're going to start with some butter in our pan. So we have our... Uh, our ceramic uh, cast iron here and we're going to get that butter nice and melted and in goes the chicken skin side down to start. So we're just going to get this started. Uh, we want to get some good color on the skin of this chicken. And we're just going to let that go for a little while until uh, we've got some nice color on there. Meanwhile, we're going to get some of our veggies ready. So we're going to start with our carrots. We want some nice big pieces of carrot in the end. So we're just going to cut these into big chunks. Uh, you want them all roughly the same size as usual, just so that they cook at around the same time. And we're also going to be cutting up our uh, celery. Now we don't particularly want big chunks of celery at the end. So we're going to cut this up a lot finer. And in your final dish, it's basically going to have all melted together into uh, into your sauce, into your soup. So we're not going to see a whole lot of the celery. It's really just there for the flavor. And with our shallots, again, uh, this is something that's going to basically melt into the uh, the final dish. So we're just going to cut this into little uh, little half rings here. Nice and thin. And the same with our onion, we're just going to give it a, uh, a nice dice into pretty small pieces. And again, we don't really want big pieces of it in the final result. Once uh, we've done with those, we're going to go back to our chicken and just take a look. And we've got some beautiful color on the skin side, so we're going to flip that over. And we're just going to get the other side working uh, in that nice butter down there. Meanwhile is a great time to get going on your uh, pearl onions. This is probably the most annoying part of this recipe. If you've ever worked with pearl onions or cipollini onions before, either one of those two, we these were marketed as cipollini, but I think they're just pearl onions. Uh, they're a pain to, uh, to peel and you have to peel all of them. Um, so now's a great time to do that while your chicken's cooking. Once your chicken is done, we're going to take it out of this pan. We're not done with this butter yet. We're going to use this butter, uh, for our aromatics, for our nice veggies. So we're going to get all that chicken out of there and in goes all of our veggies. So we're going to put in, uh, the onion, the shallot, the, uh, celery and the carrots. That's all going to start to sweat in there. We're just going to get the, uh, our aromatics nice and, uh, nice and, uh, transparent and just sort of start the cooking process on the carrots. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper as well. A 
and we're just going to give that a good stir to make sure it's well combined and uh, we've got a lot of that uh, beautiful flavorful butter on all of those ingredients to let them just sort of uh, s uh, sweat and stew a little bit together and uh, until they're they're pretty limp. We're just going to give that a little cover uh, until they're done. So you can see here those onions have gone transparent or translucent. Uh, the carrots have just sort of started to cook around the edges. And this is just about exactly where we want it. So what we're going to do is uh, sort of rearrange the carrots. We want them to be kind of even uh, because we're going to put our chicken back in here. Uh, underneath, we're first, we're going to be putting a bay leaf and some of those thyme sprigs I showed you at the beginning. So this is a beautiful fresh thyme. We're just going to pop that into there on top of those aromatics. And then we're just going to put our chicken on top of the uh, little nest of herbs we've made here. This is going to infuse everything with that beautiful fresh thyme flavor. And now we're going to add some of our wines. So we're going to add about a cup of that wine. And our chicken stock. And I know you're thinking all that beautiful crispy skin is going to get uh, soft and soggy in this stew. It's all right. We just got it brown for the flavor. Uh, it's still going to be delicious and uh, we're going to have that beautiful stewed chicken. So we're just going to put the whole uh, container of stock in there. You want to make sure everything's covered. And then we're actually going to move that over to our uh, induction burner because it allows us to control the temperature a little bit better. So we're just going to pop that on there and keep it at a very steady low simmer for a long, long time. This is one of those sort of braising stewing recipes that is a low and slow cooking temperature. So we're just going to let that cook for a long time at a low temperature, just barely simmering. You can see just a few bubbles coming to the surface. After uh, about half an hour, we're going to add in our potatoes. I want to make sure those are nice and um, clean before they go in and our peeled pearl onions. Now you don't want to add this in at the very beginning because they will take a little less time to cook and we don't want to overcook them, especially the potatoes, because we're going to do something a little special with them later. So we're just going to cover this for a little while, make sure everything's covered. If you need to add more liquid at this point, another splash of wine, a little bit of uh, stock or water at this point would be fine. We noticed that it, it had a really uh, lovely, rich, winey smell at this point which was delicious. <laughs> we had all those beautiful aromatics in there. Everything smelled fantastic. So we didn't need to add anything. Everything was still covered by the liquid. So we're just going to pop the cover on, just cracked a little bit. And again, we want to keep it at a, uh, we don't want it to be a rolling boil. We just want it to be a good solid simmer. Once those onions are cooked all the way through and not overcooked, you just want them to be nice and tender. We're going to start taking some of the things out of this. Now, this is sort of a two day recipe. We're starting on the day previous and we're going to finish our uh, recipe on the on the day that we're planning to eat it. So we're going to take our chicken out. We're also going to take the potatoes out. So we're going to take one of these potatoes out. We just want to test it to make sure it's cooked, not overcooked, still a little bit al dente. And it's just about perfect. So that's exactly what we want. And now what we want to do is let that sit overnight in the fridge. So we're going to pull all of the potatoes out. This is also a really good time to get all of the uh, thyme stems out. Um, and then we actually put the soup, the brassage, out on our balcony. We put use the Canadian refrigerator uh, and it froze overnight, which is just fine. Uh, you can put it in the fridge. You can put it in your freezer if you have room in your freezer. But what we wanted to do was make sure that the chicken fat that rose to the top was solid so that we could skim all that chicken fat off. Which is what we're doing here. So we're just going to get rid of all that fat. And then it's going to go back on the induction burner. We want to bring that back up to temperature. It's been frozen overnight and we want to, uh, we want to heat it back up. Meanwhile, we're getting our potatoes out of the fridge. So these have been in the fridge overnight. They haven't frozen, but they've been cold. So they were cooked pretty much all the way through yesterday. And now they've refrigerated, which allows the starches to sort of um, contract again. And we're going to fry these. And because they sat overnight, they're going to have this beautiful fluffy texture when we get that nice color on the outside of it. So we're just going to cut these potatoes into eights. 
You can cut them into quarters if you prefer. And then we're going to pop them into a nice hot pan with some butter. So yeah, again, more butter um, and those beautiful potatoes. A little dash of salt. Of course, the potatoes are very starchy. They take quite a bit of salt. And we're just going to let those fruit, uh, uh, fry for a little while. Meanwhile, our uh, brassage, the, uh, the soup part, has come back up to temperature. And what we're going to do is, um, now that it is warm again, we're going to put our chicken back in to bring that all back up to temperature as well. Now, we're only doing two servings right now. So we're only going to put two of the chicken thighs back in. And we're only going to do part of those uh, potatoes, in fact. We're also going to take our mushrooms at this point. So uh, we're going to chop these pretty small. Um, and these are almost a garnish, really. We're going to uh, put those into a pan next to these potatoes. You can see here we've taken some out of here. That's just two servings worth in there. And we're going to put our mushrooms in another pan with, again, some butter. So these uh, mushrooms, uh, you can see they soak up that butter like sponges, which is fine. That's exactly what we want. We want a lot of flavor. We're going to let them cook for a little while and get a beautiful color on the outside. And uh, again, you know, a little dash of salt in there. You've seen our videos before. Uh, a little dash of cognac is uh, would certainly not go awry with these beautiful <laughs> with these beautiful mushrooms. But you want them to get a lot of color on them, so they're going to shrink down quite a lot. And we're just going to set those aside once they've cooked. We're getting really close to being able to serve everything at this point, so uh, you should be everything should be getting close to the right temperature. The next thing we're going to do is put together a little uh, gravy. It's actually going to be a velouté sauce, which is based on a roux. And uh, we've done a video on how to make a roux before. So we've got a bunch of butter and we're going to add some flour to that. And we're just going to stir that together uh, and let that flour cook in the butter. And it's okay if the butter is still melting while you're mixing. Uh, it's all going to get used. It's all going to melt in there. And you can see it foaming up already. That is some of the water escaping and some of, and the flour cooking. To our roux, we're going to add some of our brassage. So this is the liquid that we braised everything in. And it has all of that amazing flavor. It has the flavor from those beautiful aromatics. It has the flavor from the chicken. It has the flavor from the onions and the carrots, those fresh herbs, the bay leaf. And it's we're just going to add that to this, uh, to this roux to make a velouté. And you can see here it's getting that kind of uh, velvety texture already, but we're just going to keep adding liquid until it is sort of the consistency that we want. And this is about it. This is exactly what we're looking for. So that flour and butter has made the roux into this amazing velouté with all of those beautiful herbs you can see that we got out of the uh, the brassage, that, uh, that beautiful braising liquid that we had. And this is full of flavor. In our other pan, you can see a lot of uh, color on those nice little potatoes. If you want a little extra color, if you want this to be nicer, you can always use uh, duck fat to fry them in. And then uh, last step is our garnish. So we've got our little bit of uh, thyme and fresh parsley here. And we're just going to give that a nice little chop. And this is going to be sort of the little finish on top of our final dish. So now it's time to assemble our plate. So uh, we're going to take some of those uh, beautiful veggies. And these are all, again, cooked all the way through. They're really, really good and uh, tender. The carrots still have a little tiny bit of bite to them. The, uh, the onions aren't mushy or anything. They've still got, they still stand up on their own. Lots of great flavor in there. So we're going to start with a little bed of our veggies. Then we're going to add uh, our chicken thigh. And on top of the chicken thigh, we're going to add some of that beautiful velouté, that, uh, that gravy we made from the uh, braising liquid. And then on one side, we're going to put in some of those beautiful crispy uh, potatoes that we cooked in the in that we cooked in butter. And a little sprinkle of our 
nicely uh, cooked mushrooms. And then a little sprinkle of that beautiful uh, fragrant and herbal uh, garnish that we made with the parsley and thyme. And we're going to finish this off with a couple of uh, little crostinis we made, sort of in the style of a croque monsieur, which are uh, sort of eggy, a savory eggy bread covered in cheese. And that's going to be next week's video, and we'll show you how we made those next week. But that's it. That's an absolutely delicious dish. As you can tell by all of the steps and all of the butter that we used in there, this is a very sort of French style dish, but is absolutely delicious. Um, we really hope you'll give it a try. And uh, if you like this recipe, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any recipes you'd like to see Chef Caleb try on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. And remember to love your food.